and what's going on this is your boy joe fontaine the vip sound lab and i'm going to be taking a look at battery four i had a vip member who was asking me some questions as far as could i go over the effects page on battery four and explain to him how it works now i'd be more than glad to do that so on battery four one thing i like about it you can assign cell colors uh pretty much how you do inside uh, machines pads and you have an output option here where you can assign your buses and things of that nature so a lot of bells and whistles on this there's no way i can explain this in just one video so it's going to take a couple so on this particular section let's go ahead and do the effects you have the main page effects modulation you have setup editor and master on the main page here this basically gives you a series of plugins on a cell by cell basis to process individual uh, sounds you have five plugin modules you can rearrange the order by dragging them with the icon um, right here which is in the top right hand corner as I'm doing right here you can see how I can you know rearrange your plugin chain if you want to if you want to do it that way all right so now we have the saturation plugin uh, right here now this is like a tape saturation effect they all have power buttons and drop down menus with presets the saturation plug has three different modes it has classic drums and tape below that is a gain knob that controls the gain uh, the higher the gain the higher the tape distortion and compression the warmth is only available in the tape mode. Drums and classic or more simplified controls. The warmth uh, is basically just a low frequency booster cut, man. So um, with that, it also has a high frequency, I believe it's called, that controls the high frequency roll off. So you can use your arrows here to control these modes or you can go like this and open it up in a menu like this. Okay, so you notice how this is classic, this is drums. Okay, and then you have tape, which gives you these options here for warmth. And you have the cutoff here. So that's, that's basically how that works in a nutshell. So I mean, if you know, if you want to get some Lex luger -y type of effect on your, on your 808s, you know, you can experiment with that. Okay, let me hurry up because I don't want to run too long. Seeing if I can get that effect, but anyway, that's how that section works all right now here we have the the, the lo-fi module which lowers the sample rate uh, and bit depth and adds noise and coloration uh, and downgrades the sample quality now bits uh, basically that's a, that's a knob that uh, how can I explain it it reduces or requantizes the bit depth the lower the bit depth the nastier the sound becomes the more grittier it sounds the more you know glitchy I guess you that's probably a better word to use and then you have the Hertz, uh, which basically resamples the sample rate to an adjustable variable rate. Uh, then you have noise, which adds just, just like a, a hissing sound. And then you have the color, which adjusts the frequencies, characteristics of the noise. So basically with this plugin, man, uh, the noise is actually um, the characteristics, I guess you could say, of this plugin. Because you reduce the sample's quality and you reduce the sample rate and then you add noise to it. So for example notice how towards the end of the wave file you you hear it more prominent here because you know there's nothing getting in, in the way of your ears so when I lower the bit depth you know it doesn't have as much to work with back here let me just hurts on that add a little noise You'll, you'll, you'll hear this a lot in like Daft Punk music. You know, that glitchy, those glitchy sounding kicks. Because I don't want to, I don't want to run too long with each little module here because we'll go way long in the video. But you know, you get the idea in that. All right, now this one's going to take a little minute to explain, man. All right, because the filter and EQ section here, man, there's seven of them. Okay, so all right, it's like this. How can I explain this one? Okay, this module, it has lots of different modes. Uh, I mean, and a lot. <laughs> because with EQs and filters, the idea is to change the gain at specific frequencies. Um, we have seven types we can choose from. The arrows or the drop-down menus I'm doing right here, okay? Now, the solid G EQ is it's a solid four-band parametric. Um, the low band and the high band have a bell button below them, so you can toggle between... Uh, the shelves or the or a regular parametric band so lots of control to shape the drum sounds um 
let's let's go ahead and take a look at that right quick. All right, so here's here's a low pass. I'm on I'm on this pole here. I can adjust the cutoff or the steep or the steepness. I guess you can say. Again, I don't want to do. I'm not going to do too many examples, guys, because we don't want to run too long. So I'll, I'll just do it like that. And here's the. Let's bring this down a little bit. If you want to hone in on specific frequencies. All right, so that should give you an idea on that. Now, here's the, the three band EQ. Okay, now with the three band EQ, it's it's pretty typical. Um, you know, just a regular three band EQ. It has bands, you know, you see right there, one, two, and three. Um, that button below it that says bandwidth, um, that's a Q control to control the width of the band. Um, and it has like like a boost cut. So let's say I can move to the frequencies like this. Let's say I'm band two. Put it more in the mid. Wait, that's too much. I mean, I'm not, well, let me go back. I know I'm, I'm not really trying to get this perfect, but you have three individual controls. And then let's say here in the high frequency, I want to boost that a little bit. All right. So that, that's a pretty good example, man. I mean, I'm not going to run too long. That's kind of a clicky kick. Cause you know, like, like I know on my drum kits, I, I do like a lot of stack in the drum sound. You can check out the drum kits on, on my website. And sometimes, you know, when you're stacking sounds, you can lose some of the clarity in your drums because it won't have that that clicky, nice top end, you know, to to make it sound more, more, more clean. You know, so a lot of times, you know, you want to EQ your, your drums. All right. So now we have low pass. Now, low pass, actually. OK, there, there there's a low pass and a high pass. Um, they're standard filter types. Low pass attenuates the signal above the cutoff frequency and you have different poles which controls the filters of the curve again or the steepness of the curve. The middle knob um, basically controls the resonant peak. Okay, so for example, this is going to sound really beepy. Let me lower this down because I don't want to blow you guys ears out. And, uh, See All right, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Probably not to when I jumped to daft. Yeah, there it goes. Now, guard your ears on this because. Ah, <laughs> you see what I mean? Let me. Lower that back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. When it when it gets to, to, to this 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 pole here, that's the one where you gotta guard Yeah, you gotta guard your ears on. All right, so without going too far, that's that's how that that goes. So that's low pass, high pass. Oops. Okay, high pass just is basically obviously is the opposite of low pass. Okay, uh, so I'm not gonna go over that. You you know you'll get the idea on that. You know that's just more of a higher higher frequency, and of course that noisy sound there. All right, then from there we have um, band pass. Band pass uh, basically attenuates the signal both above and below for a narrow band uh, pass through. So let me adjust the cue on that. And again, I'm just in the cutoff. So basically just filtering it. So when you want that nice subby, there you go. Nice muffly band pass kick. Again, you know, I do I do a lot of layering and kick, so that's a nice little 808 under, you know, then you might want to add a nice little clicky top on top of that. 
and you'll have one one real tight sounding 808 all right peak and notch let's let's do these right quick now this one's more or less for when you want to uh, cut around frequencies instead of boosting so it has it has you know sorry about my mouse jumping around it keeps bringing up my dock like this but anyway you can you can see right here where I can notch out you know if I want to notch out the bass or if I want to take out the mid a little bit or if I want to take a little more of the high end out it has like different uh, notches here you know so whatever you want to do you want to come in there and notch out whatever you want to notch add a little more resonance Bring a little more to high and out you know whatever you want to do like I mentioned before a nice clicky kick that little clicky sound might come in useful on top of something you, I mean you never know but that's that's what that's for then you have you know the effects which is just more or less for um, it has a, a format value in it and um, the filter effect it's, it's just for nice little subtle effects you know get a little four minute one four minute two then it got val a and b you know a little phaser the phaser i really i really can't hear that too much that's because i'm on his kick probably but you know you get the idea on that okay compressor probably every producer's favorite <laughs> uh yeah <clears throat> for those who don't know about compressors or understand compressors or what exactly a compressor does a compressor basically it's to reduce the peaks it raises the low levels of the signal to produce a higher average level of the signal it has three modes this compressor has um let's see if i can remember here it has classic pro and it has solid bus they're just three different algorithms and again you have the arrows here or you can have the drop down menu here so let's start with classic first and um, you have the threshold here okay now the threshold just basically determines at what level the compressor will kick in and start working you see it working right there all right so the ratio determines how much it's going to reduce the signal see that I lower the ratio didn't reduce it as much in other words louder that's what that means man so if you if you want something loud for whatever reason lower your ratio if you don't raise it up depending on what you're doing because you know man that's so hard to explain you know sometimes you want it you want a higher ratio and a higher threshold to stay more clean or in a track if, if that makes sense sometimes you got to get quieter in the mix to get an overall louder master in most situations you want to have a lot of headroom uh for lack of a better term um then you have the attack which basically uh determines once the compressor uh threshold is met it's going to say okay how quickly do i want to start acting so if you want a fast attack you just drop it down if you want a long release okay now the release is just basically that determines how quickly it's going to return to the default state of the signal. So if you want to have it longer to keep the effect, make it longer. If you're like, I want to, you know, I just want to have it towards the beginning. You want to have a shorter release. And then that gets into tuning it to where you want it to start coming in and releasing. You might want to hone in on a certain little area, you know, Pro, you know, then you have solid bus. Oops, turned it off by mistake. Solid bus is just basically, um, you know, it's a mode. It allows you to blend in the uncompressed signal with the mix signal. So you have a mix icon here. So when you want to blend, you have a makeup icon here. If you want to, you know, a lot of times you want to compensate for what you're taking off. So that's what the makeup's for. Yeah, these modes is only available in the solid bus comp, by the way. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the transient master. Um, 
transient master how can i explain this um it, it basically controls the attack and sustain of sound in other words you adjust the attack and decays quality of a sound in other words so you know that's great for when you want subtle effects and you know tuning of a sound so you can I'm, I'm, again i'm using a kick here you know if i want to adjust the attack on that Now I'm basically tuning the transients, you know, so however you want to do that, you might want to close your eyes and just, you know, listen to the sound until you get what you're looking for. That's, you know, basically how that works. But um, not 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 to run too long. If we go back to the um, the compressor, um, I just want to show you this real quick before we um, end the video, guys. Um, the solid bus comp can really be useful on the master page. So I'm gonna go to the master page for a minute and basically you can assign these cell sounds, um, to some of the same plugins, uh, to the buses. So if you, if you have a signal routed through one of the buses, you can use the compressors solid bus comp mode to achieve different results. For example, this kick here, let's go ahead and. And, and route this on bus one and now when I hit bus one or rather when I hit kick rather you see I have this kick on bus one now whereas this kick here is still on the master so now when I turn I turn on this compressor this bus you see it getting compressed it's getting compressed whereas this one here is not you see that so basically I just wanted to show you that because you can move the mix control up and down here to control the signal of the whole entire uh, kit. You know, it, it controls everything at one time, whatever's on this channel. For example, let me go ahead and put this one on the bus. So <clears throat> that can be uh, a, a, a option when you want to have further manipulation, um, basically over your mix. Okay. And we also have another option here, which is side chain. You press side chain bus comp here and you notice how you get the source side chain here. So if you want to take a sound and side chain, compress it, you can just take it and drop it in like so. So you have that option as well. But you know, I'm I'm not going into great detail with that. That that'd be another video. I just wanted to you know basically stick with the effects and show you how these little modules work again. Because Battery Four is a monster, and just to go over everything at one time, there would just be no way. So that's pretty much it. I don't want to run too long on this one. On the support Joe Fontaine of the VIP Sound Lab. Be sure to come by the VIP Sound Lab. We have a, a membership fee. It's only $9.99. No monthly fees. Again, I repeat, no monthly fees. Just a one-time fee. It locks you in for a lifetime subscription of free tutorial videos on the machine. We never charge for tutorial videos. Pro Tools, Reason Machine, FL Studio. We have a, a, a VIP member welcome pack, which gives you a free drum kit at sign up, as well as a lot of goodies. You have access to the VIP database one and two, which have tons of NPC sounds, motif sounds, free controller editor templates for Pro Tools and Machine things of that nature uh, we have lots of drum kits we have a lot of discounts uh, for VIP members and a lot of monthly goodies that we give away such as free drum kits free control letter templates things of that nature we're always giving out free goodies over, over there on the website uh, the link for the, uh, the website I'll leave in the uh, description of the video and I look forward to seeing you guys come over there and that's pretty much it and I will see you guys on the next one